All right, welcome everybody. Um, today I'm just gonna be going over loading film, but not loading film in just a normal camera. If you look, what we have here is a 1950s Kodak Duraflex 4. So back in the 1950s, film wasn't as normal as it was today. There's a lot more, you know, styles of film. So instead of 120, which is what we have here and what we'll be using today, they actually shot on something very similar called 620. And that was something that Kodak did just for their cameras, which we're talking about the Duraflex here. That's what we're working with. So the problem with that is 120 film was actually a little wider than 620. So there's no way to put a roll of 120 film directly into a 620 camera. However, there's one way to get around it, sort of a hack. Um, and all you need is an old 620 roll and a roll of 120 film, and you can make this work. So the big thing to start with is that there's two differences. So this is a 620 roll. This is a 120 roll. Um, the 620 rolls are usually made out of metal. You can kind of hear that. <laughs> Whereas the 120s, at least the current modern day 120 rolls, are all these plastic film rolls. And you can see they're a little bulkier, and it's hard to tell, but just ever so slightly shorter the 620 is versus the 120. So if you try to take and put a roll of 120 into a camera that takes 620, like our Kodak here, you can even see. Use Kodak 620 film. Like I said, the problem is, is if you try to put 620 in there, it just sits a little too wide. You can see it sits a little too wide and it won't even go down into the loader. So, can't use 120 rolls. But, like I said, the beauty of that is those 620 rolls fit in there perfectly. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be showing you guys how to take and roll 120 film off of its spool and onto a 620 spool. So part of this I'll be able to show you guys and I'll do it just by using an old roll of film we have around. This is just an old roll of 120 and it's actually just the paper because we've already developed the film but it'll be a good way to show you guys what's going on without actually ruining film. So if we were to try to roll this film onto a 620 roll in the light, we'd ruin the film, we'd expose it, it wouldn't be any good. So everything of actually rolling this I'm going to have to do in the dark, but just to show you guys what's up, we'll uh, start by showing you with this test roll here. So the first thing we're going to do is take our roll of 120 and we're actually going to take another 120 roll and roll it all onto it first. There's two ways you can do this. Technically, I could do this in the light just by putting it into one of my 120 cameras and then rolling all the way through without taking any photos just to get it wound onto one roll. But currently, my cameras all have film in them, so we'll have to do it by hand. And it's pretty simple. All of these rolls, if you can see this, have a slot in the middle of them. And all of the paper backing for 120 film has a little tab here. So all you do is take that tab and put it through your 120 roll and then start winding it. And then you just take by hand and you transfer them from reel to reel, just like an old cassette tape in a way. And like I said, this would all be done in the dark because if we were to do this in the light, our film would be behind this paper backing and it would be exposed. So this is just to show you guys kind of the process. All right, so that's the end of it. And now we'd be in the dark room and we'd have this rolled onto our reel. And you can see it actually even says exposed. So now that we have that, what we're going to want to do is at this point we're going to take our 620 spool and we're going to repeat the process in reverse. So we're just going to take this film we just rolled on there, same thing, feed it through our slot, 
and then wind it back onto our 620 roll. And this is a little tougher, like I said, these are a little thinner, so it's a little tighter on that paper, but it still works. Now you can see we're just going to take and roll this 120 roll onto a 620. Alright, so there is the end of our roll. And now, keep in mind this would all be done in the dark, but now we have an unexposed roll of 120 film rolled onto a 620 roller. So now, if we were to take our camera and open up the back, there we go. Now, we can easily take and put this roll of 120 rolled onto a 620 roll right into our camera. And now it slides in there perfectly. All right, so we are going to take our roll of 120 film we talked about and go into our dark room, and we are going to spool and unspool that roll like we showed here to get it onto our 620 spool. And then we will come back here. All right, so back out of the dark room, and now we have our roll of 120 spooled onto our 620 film holder. So pretty easy. And now, like I said, all we need to do is take our camera that takes our 620 spools, open it up, and in this case, this guy just flips up like this. And that's as simple as just popping the film into the film holder. And then just like any other camera, we're just going to take and bring that film across our film back. And then we have another spool on the top end of this guy. So we're just going to put that through and then start turning it to get that paper backing situated in there. Then once we have that started, we're going to close our back up and then we're going to start winding. And then as we wind, there's no notches or anything on this film, so to know where we are, we actually have this little red guide window on the back. And as we roll through that, we'll see symbols and numbers come up. And in this case, since we started this roll, we're just going to roll it until we see the number one. And then that's how we know we're at our first frame. And there you go. Now we're at number one. So this camera is loaded and ready to go. So I'm going to take this guy out today, shoot this film, and then we'll come back and we'll develop it and see how it turns out. Stay tuned. All right, so I had a chance to take the Kodak out and shoot with it. Once again, took it out with the wife and kid just to uh, take some portraits. The nice thing about this camera is it's so simple that it really doesn't distract you from what you're doing if you're out with your friends or family. It's really simple in that way. Um, some weird quirks about this camera, you can see with the waist level viewfinder here, uh, whatever you're seeing in the viewfinder is actually reversed from what you're looking at, which can be a little disorientating at first. Um, another kind of quirk of this camera is uh, with the shutter speed on this, because it's an older camera, it's a pretty slow shutter speed and with it being old it actually was a little slower than it should have been so in some of these pictures you can see it's a little blurry especially when anybody's moving um, another kind of quirk of these older cameras is that the lenses were so kind of simple that they had a lot of ghosting and a lot of flaring in them and you'll see that too which is kind of nice because that ghosting and flaring is what makes these images kind of unique and different from say shooting on digital and, you know, once again, that's kind of why you choose to shoot film for that different look. So that's really all I have for this camera today. Thanks for watching, guys.